Hi, this is Richard Barrett for Guitarist, and I want to show you the new Charvel San Dimas Guthrie Govan Signature. Now, this is the Japanese version of the guitar that's already been available for a while in the US version. And there are a couple of minor differences, but as we'll see, these really are minor differences. So, in the broadest terms, we have that Strat style body and neck. And we have a basswood body with an ash veneer top, so that gives us the figuring that you can see through the three-tone sunburst. So flipping it over, you'll see that we have slightly sculpted features going on here behind the treble side cutaway and at the treble side of the neck joint and what you'd expect from a Strat style body there. As you'll see, the, the back of the guitar completely black. The sunburst only happens on the front here. I'm going to skip to the other end and talk to you about the tuners, which are goto locking tuners. So let's just flip this around and show you where you thread the string through, pull it taut, lock it. And the benefit of those is the points of friction are greatly reduced. No winds around the post. These are staggered posts as well, by the way, so there's no need for string retainers. So that point of friction is eliminated. There's a tusk, a Graftec tusk nut here, so you don't need to be crumpling graphite into it at every string change. And we have the straight string pull that you'd expect with a Strat type headstock. Now let's move on and talk about the neck, which is a shallow C profile, has a 12 to 16 inch compound radius. So you've got a friendly curve for your chords and it feels very traditional. But then when you get to the top end of the fretboard, the flatter profile allows for a low action with much cleaner fretting. So those bends at the top are much less likely to choke out with a low action. The frets themselves are jumbo, they're stainless steel, and they're quite high, which definitely helps with the legato and tapping. You get a really positive feel back off of that. Um, at the bottom of the neck here, which has two reinforcing graphite strips to aid stability, and at the bottom here, we have an opening so that you can access this spoke wheel adjuster for this truss rod, which is a two-way truss rod. So you'll probably be beginning to get the impression that this has been very carefully thought through and you'd be absolutely right. Guthrie is obviously a very experienced touring musician and the kind of issues that you can have going from country to country um, with necks moving and needing tweaking, you don't want to be taking the neck off to do it like the old Strat type and two-way adjustment is obviously preferable to the old-fashioned one-way. The reinforcing carbon graphite strips again, aid the stability, so chances are you won't need to make that adjustment in the first place. So you can see, very sensibly thought through. And that approach carries on through to the pickups and the wiring. So let's perhaps start on a more broad view here, master tone and master volume. On practical level, we have these knurled Telecaster type knobs and these are numbered so you don't have to guess where you are. With, with my Telecaster, I, I have it positioned so that the grub screw tells me where off is and I can guess. It works okay, but we have the numbers here, which takes that guesswork out of it. On top of that, there's a little brass or metal insert in the body so that you absolutely know where you are at all times. The master volume has a very good treble bleed circuit in it as well, so that if you are using the volume control for those tonal colours, then you're not suddenly going to lose top end. Right, you'll see HSH, humbucker, single humbucker. And as you might hope, as you go through the selections, you actually do get the automatic split coils in positions two and four which of course are hum cancelling. Should you wish for a bridge or neck single coil type sound, this extra switch is a simulation of single coil. Simply put, it's a capacitor that acts like a bass cut switch. So perhaps it's time to have a little listen to those. Let's hear the full on bridge humbucker. <laughs> 
that's around 14 and a half K. So that's by no means super hot, but it's not vintage either. That'll drive a traditional amp easily. Now let's hear it with the simulated single coil. That's the slug coil and the screw coil has the bass cut. Let's take it off. The difference is very apparent and you'll notice that there isn't the volume drop that you might get with a traditional coil tap or coil split. Okay, let's put that back into full fat mode and then move into position two, which is the split humbucker combined with the single coil. You'll hear that there is a volume jump there because that bridge pickup is quite hot. These pickups are all body mounted with a little bit of foam underneath, which allows a minimal bit of adjustment just to trim. But the way that this is put together, you shouldn't need to do too much. Moving on to the position three, that's the middle single coil. And then four. That's split neck and middle. And then neck. Let's just hear that with the simulated coil split. So you'll hear that's very effective. And again, you don't get that volume drop that you would normally get if you turned one of the coils off. I think it might be worth me showing you what the treble bleed works like with a bit of gain. So I'm just going to flip on my Boss Super Overdrive. Here's the bridge pickup with a bit of gain. Now I'm going to play a little bit then just bring the volume back to about halfway and you'll hear how the clarity is retained. So that's great if you want to play in the very old school way of having a driven sound and 10 being your lead sound and maybe five or six being your rhythm sound, down to about three perhaps for... down to about three for a cleanish tone. And so you can see that the, the little locator, a brass pin and the volume numbers are very useful to facilitate that and be predictable. Now, finally, I should mention the vibrato bridge, which is a Floyd Rose style. It's steel and it has a brass block. It's also recessed so you can get quite a considerable up pull on there. So it's not locking, but it's very, very stable. It's impressive. And I'm not really sure whether that's a combination of things like the carbon graphite reinforcing strips and the nut and the tuners, the whole thing really does hang together very, very well under quite heavy use. Price wise, we're looking at a considerable saving, more than a grand less than the US version of the same guitar. So this comes in about 2,450 British pounds. And it's a guitar that obviously Guthrie is a, a unique, very exceptional player. And his input has been all over this design, but you don't need to be a player like Guthrie to enjoy a guitar like this. It's extremely practical and usable and I make a great workhorse. Now, having said what I've just said, I've done a track to demo this to you where I've tried to do my best Guthrie impersonation and I hope you enjoy it. <laughs>